Welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affairs show on television. Here on The Point of View, we pick the right topics, get the right guests, and ask the relevant questions on issues that matter to you. The only difference is that tonight you are the ones asking all the relevant questions because I've brought in studio two of the members of the committee that's implementing the e-levy. Earlier today, they met journalists and they explained to us some of the modalities for the levy. So I thought it would be nice to bring a couple of them in studio to answer questions that you've been sending me. I know I've been receiving questions from some of you via email. Some of you have been sending comments to my radio show as well. So tonight, we're going to put your questions directly to two officials of the Ghana Revenue Authority, and they'll do their best to answer them as the process towards the implementation of this levy starts. We'll be right back. Stay with us. So welcome. So tonight we're live in studio. Send us your questions on the WhatsApp number on the screen. If you're on any of the social media platforms, you can preface your questions with point of view as the hashtag or just let us, uh, you can put your comments under the stream if you're watching this on Facebook. So tonight I have a principal revenue officer of the GRA, Isaac Kobna Mwaku. He's also the head of the project management unit of GRA. Isaac, welcome to the show. Thank you. I also have Nana Opoku Free Asante. He is the member of the E Levy Technical Committee, GRE. Welcome, uh, Nana. Thank you very much, Ben. So it appears there's a committee that's implementing the E Levy. Uh, what have you guys been up to since the president has sent it, since parliament passed the bill? Just give me a quick walkthrough what okay. has been happening since that, ha that okay. incident. A lot of things have happened. Um, we've done engagement with stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And stakeholders, we mean stakeholders from all the parties that the law recognizes. So mm -hmm. we are looking at the association of bankers, mm -hmm. so where the banks um, all converge. Mm -hmm. We are looking at the PSPs. They also have a group. Um, we've met them. We've also... So that's payment service providers. The payment service right. providers, yeah. Mm -hmm. The payment service providers. Um, mm -hmm. We are looking at the... Um, electronic money issuers. The electronic uh, money issuers, yeah. EMIs. EMIs. EMIs, yeah. So who is a payment service provider? Okay. So let's let's create a difference. Okay. The EMI have been given license by Bank of Ghana to create um, electronic currency. So, um, so MTN mobile money company. That's right. MTN, Vodafone, all the cash, and Vodafone cash, cash. And then these other three. Go cash. Yes. They are the electronic money, money issuers. issuers. Right. And then these three other have joined them. Zipay, G Money. Yeah. And I think the last one has escaped me. They've yeah, also been given license. So I think we have it's six Koba. of them. Koba, good. So Zipay, G Money, and Koba. And then the three... The telco three, money issuers. Telco right. So money they are the issuers. EMIs. They are the EMIs. The six. And the then who six. are the PSPs? Okay. The PSPs are a lot. Um, I don't know the count. Just the definition. Who is a payment, a payment service, service provider? provider? Okay. Dana, we take that. All right. Yeah. So generally, they provide a platform for payments. Okay. So for example. So like Slide Pay? Yeah. Slide you pay, can think of Slide Dream Express Mobile. Pay, Express Pay. Express yes. Pay. And then, yeah. Okay, so e transact. E transact, e -transact is part. Yeah. So they are the payment service, service providers. providers yeah. Good. I see. So there's the bankers. There's the bankers. There's the telcos there's who the telcos, we call EMIs. EMIs. Then there's the payment service providers. providers. That's right. Then and then who else? The SDIs. SDI. Special deposit taking institutions. institutions. So microfinance. Yeah. Yes. So micro savings and loans, rural banks, and yes. micro community banks. Yeah. Okay. They fall under that. So category. you've met all these people? Except the SDI. 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 So you are here to meet them? Yeah. We are here to meet them. Actually, one of the SDI executives sent me about five questions. Maybe he's not happy you've not met him. So I'll read his questions later on. <laughs> okay. Boa is the head of the Savings and Loans Association. When he heard you were coming, he sent me five exam questions for you. Uh, so, but let's just go through still. So you've been meeting people. What else have you been doing? When you meet them, what do you tell them? What else have you been doing as we build up to first meet? Okay, so basically it's uh, about engaging. How do we go live on the 1st of May? Okay. So, for example, the EMIs, we engaged them. They came to GRA. Mm -hmm. uh, we shared the API documentation on how they can actually integrate with the GR GRA application mm -hmm. so that they, on 1st May we can go live. Mm -hmm. So, basically, we've been doing that since uh, the president assented to the bill. Amazing. All right, so let's do some basic FAQs before I read the questions that have come in. So, this E-Levy, who... Or what transactions will it affect? What type of transactions? I think you listed five earlier. Yes. If you can just remind us of okay. those, those okay. five. So, no, no, uh, let me pick okay. that. You want to yeah. do that? Mm -hmm. Five yeah, transactions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or is it so, um, the, the act gives um, the scope mm -hmm. of transactions that are within coverage. All right. So, the first one is um, mobile money 
to another mobile money on the same electronic money issuer platform. Okay. So an example is MTN to MTN, Vodafone okay. to Vodafone. So those intra platform. Mobile transfer between users on the same on network. The same on the same network. network. Airtel to Airtel, Airtel Vodafone right. to Vodafone, 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 MTN to MTN yes. is on the screen yes. there. Yes. So that's the first one, yellow that's to yellow one. or blue to blue. Perfect. Second one is what? Second one is also um, electronic money issue. That's mobile phone, but to another network, but the same EMI. So okay. telcos, but another telco, MTN to Vodafone, MTN to Airtel Tigo, mm. and vice versa. So that could also be from Zpay to MTN. That could also MTN, be from Zpay to MTN. From Vodafone Koba to Airtel. To, yes. 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 Across. Yeah, so across so EMIs. different, but it's still a transfer. It's still yeah, that's right. mobile money. Mobile money. And the third one? The third one then is bank. Bank. So bank to mobile money. So in this case, if I have an account at APSA, APSA. and I want to send money to MTN, Nana, who is on Vodafone, yes. yes, I will send from my APSA account to your Vodafone and I'll be charged. That's right. Yes. That's so that's right. what you mean by transfer from bank, bank account to Momo account. To account. Yes. yes. Yeah. Now, but there's something interesting at this stage. The bank accounts were not qualified. So it presupposes that any bank account, a corporate bank account. Or an individual bank account. An individual bank account, yeah. Beautiful. So that's the third one. That's the third. But if I have an APSA account, yes. and I also have an MTM mobile money, okay. and I'm picking money from my APSA account yeah. to my MTM momo, will I be charged? That one, you go to the exclusion. So am I excluded? Yeah. So, that's, okay. so, yeah. so for now, we are looking at the coverage. We'll, we'll come uh -huh. there Then shortly. we'll go to the exclusion. So yeah. first one, momo between user of the same network. Second one, momo between user of different network. Yes. Third one is transfer from bank to Momo account. Yes. What's the fourth one? The fourth one is vice versa of the third. Fantastic. So that means from mobile phone or mobile money mm -hmm. to the bank. That's also easy to understand. Yes. What's the last one? So the last one is a little bit complex. Mm -hmm. It is complex because there, there's um, what we call um, uh, instant pay. Mm -hmm. That's a word the instant pay um, digital platform or application. Mm -hmm. So there's a bank account. Mm -hmm. using instant pay digital payment platform mm -hmm. or application belonging to an individual. Mm -hmm. So the account here has been restricted. So it means corporate are not covered under the fifth one. Mm -hmm. So if you have a corporate account, you, the fifth one does not put a cover on you. Mm -hmm. And then the transaction type you are doing must be instant pay. I get it. On a digital platform mm. or an application. An application here could be a banking app, it could be the USSD, could be the internet bank, any digital app. Mm -hmm. That is instant pay. Good. Uh -huh. Who collect the tax? GRA. Okay. GRA. But who collect it for you? Okay. The charging parties. Who is a charging party? And I take it. A charging okay, party. so a charging entity, uh, as stated in the law, is mandated to charge the levy and then uh, transmit it to GRA. To you. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Can you list some of them in terms of categories? Oh, so that's what uh, my colleague we, mentioned. We, we have the earlier. EMIs. Yeah, so that would mention first. So yeah, the EMIs are first, charging yes. parties. They are yes. the charging parties. PSPs right. are charging parties. Or charging entities. The law calls them charging yeah. entities. Banks are charging, charging entities. entities. Mm -hmm. And SDIs are charging, charging entities. entities. Right. Good. So there are four of them, we, we know them, they exist. Mm -hmm. But the law made provision that if there is some that is yet to be born, when he gets born, the minister should add them to the list by regulation. So a regular barber who charges Momo for haircut is not the one to collect the tax for no. you? No. Once the payment is made through any of these four groups, yes. those people will collect the money for you? Yes. Fair enough. Let's talk about who is excluded or what transaction okay. is excluded. Okay. okay, so I'll take that one. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so we have a cumulative transfer up to 100 Ghana CDs a day by the same person. So, for example, if I have 200 CDs mm. and then I transfer that money to someone else, mm -hmm. uh, the law... Uh, okay, so you are exempted for up to about 100 Ghana CDs. So it means that the first 100 Ghana CDs out of the 200 that you are sent it is exempted. Mm -hmm. So then the levy doesn't apply. Okay. So if I send 20 CDs a day, mm -hmm. the levy doesn't apply. Mm -hmm. If I send 90 CDs uh, the following day, the levy doesn't apply. So long as that transfer doesn't exceed 100 in that same day, uh, the levy won't apply. So you have an exemption of up to 100 CDs a day for that same person. For one person. But this is across board. So let's assume I have an Airtel to go and then Momo for MTN. And I send 50 CDs on Airtel Tigo. And I want to send 60 CDs on MTN. 
Will you know I'm the same person? Yes. yes. So you okay. catch me? Yes. So we have uh, what we call the common platform. It's a system that GRE has okay. built mm. that is consolidating all these transactions. Okay. So what happens is that before an EMI or a bank or an SDI uh, sends your uh, transfer, it mm. consults the common platform and then asks the common platform, uh, do you know the identity of this person? The common platform will then check across the ecosystem. Which is why they ask us to register everything using the, the Ghana card. card. So the common platform actually uses the Ghana card as the base identity. So if I have an MTM mobile money account, I have an APSA account, and I have a Vodafone account, and I have not regularized the Ghana card as the identity for one of the three, you would not know I'm the same person. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So this is a, a way we are encouraging people that if you haven't uh, gone to acquire your Ghana card and then you haven't linked it with your account, mm. this is the best time to do okay. that because once we go live mm. and then you haven't linked your Ghana card to your account mm. then you won't be able to enjoy that uh, so the first exemption is it. your cumulative spending below 100 cities that's right first exemption for everybody that's right. on SS. who else is exempted what else is exempted okay so uh, the another exemption is that when you transfer money uh, from your accounts so for example I have an EcoBank account and I'm transferring money to my GCB account I'm transferring money to my mobile money wallet so because I'm the same person, I'm exempt from being taxed because I'm the same person. Oh, wow. So, so if you're money across banks using mobile money, it still doesn't charge that's because right. you are the same person. That's right. That's fair enough. So that's also exempt. Is there any other exemption? Three. Yeah. So uh, transfer for the payment of taxes, fees, and charges on the Ghana.gov platform. Taxes. Fees and, and charges, charges on the Ghana.gov platform. Or oh. any other designated uh, government of Ghana uh, platform. Payment platform. Payment platform, that's right. So let's assume I have ECG. Yes. I have a post-paid meter. Yeah. And they said I should pay my bill. Yeah. And I want to use MTM Momo to pay. So I go to star 170 hash. I go to pay bill. And I go to ECG. And I put my account in there. Will I be charged a e-levy for paying my bill to ecg or because it's not a ghana.gov platform Good. i'll be charged so, so you've veered off the platform so there's a platform called ghana.gov mm -hmm. so far as a government uh, institution like ecg is enrolled on that platform when you make a payment to that institution on that platform that is when you enjoy this particular taxes fees and charges but the one you have just described will be the next um, exemption. The next exemption. Yeah. 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 So the Ghana.gov is the third exemption. Yes. Any transaction which is a tax, a fee, or a charge on Ghana.gov is exempt. Or a, gov a designated this government, government of, of Ghana, Ghana platform. payment yeah. platform. So that's exemption three. Yeah. Exemption which one is exemption four? Specified yeah. merchant payments. Specified merchant payments. Yeah, there are some ingredients in there that you will have to understand before that transaction qualifies as a specified merchant payment. First, we have to know who a merchant is. Okay. So uh, per the law, a merchant is a commercial establishment that is registered with the GRA for either income tax or VAT. So you first have to be a merchant recognized by GRA for those purposes. For those purposes. Then we go to how that payment is being effected. It has to be through a payment service. So if you transfer, if I transfer money to you, it's just a transfer. It's not a payment for a service that you have rendered. So let's me. make it simple. You go to your barber. He says it's 50 CDs. Yes. Now, you can decide to just send Momo 50 CDs to the barber's phone number. Yeah. That one, he'll pay e Yes. yes. By his 50, so he'll you pay. Will pay you, you, you will pay. You will pay, not the, the barber. By his 50, so he'll pay. If it's 100, <laughs> okay. then one, okay. Pay. okay, so do it. But I get it. Yeah, so yeah, let's yeah, assume yeah, yeah. he cuts heads for five people, mm -hmm. and we are paying 200 CDs. Yeah. If I send the money directly to the barber's Momo, I'll be charged e yes. yes. But let's assume I go to star 170 hash. Option two. Option two. I go to Momo Pay. Yes. And I put the barber's code in there. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're saying that if this barber is registered with GRE yes. and it's a tax paying agent, yeah. I won't be paid, I won't pay e levy. Exactly. Yes. But if this barber still uses star 170 hash, he's not registered with you, I'll pay the tax. Yes. yes. So it's possible for businesses to be registered on MTN or Vodafone on Airtel, but because it's not registered with you, you whoever pays money to them has to pay the e levy. Perfect. That's right. Why are you doing that? <laughs> Let me take that. So that is to encourage businesses to come into the tax net. So that's the other objective mm -hmm. of the e-levy. That look, there are so many people who are operating within our space and they are not known by the Ghana Revenue Authority. Mm -hmm. We are going to make their product more expensive on the platform so that 
their colleagues who are compliant to the tax law become competitive. And that should force them to come and regularize. How simple is it for a business to register <laughs> with GRE? It's as simple as ABC. I mean, you just walk in there. If you're a small business, you, small businesses, um, we normally give them those what we call tax stamps. But tax stamp is not on the digital platform. So for tax stamp, we are envisaging that we would register them as personal income taxes. Okay. It is just as simple as you have your Ghana card number. Yeah. And then you, you so what if they don't want to come to your office? Let's assume I have a, a small restaurant. I have, I, Baba is a good example. I have, yes. Baba. I have a small Baba shop yes. in Medina. Yes. I want to do the right thing. Yeah. I have a TIN number personal. I have a Ghana card number. And I want to be able to register for GRE. Can't I just go online and do the registration? So the registration is one time in your life. It's not something that you're coming to do. And when you do it, you, every day you have to come. Okay. And the kind of people, you, at least the example you've given, these are people you would not direct them to online. You Why rather, not? Because they don't have the skill set. Have you heard of degree, Baba? Is well, the, they, 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 the degree? Yeah, you they, just can go online. Yeah, but they'll be the exception. But the majority that will find, I will not direct them to So the you think they should go platform. to it? But you see, we don't want to go to your office because your office is... We don't like the people in office. So already last year, we have made sure about 100% of you don't come to our office. So we don't accept any payment in our office. Is that not a good We want class to register without coming to see your office people. So because the, the office people, they, they, we don't, they confuse us. Registration is one time. You can use your Ghana card, but the platform that you're doing, it's, it's a one-time activity. So we should come to an office? For this category of people, you need to come to So for office. small business owners, they should come. One time. They should come and register. Just register and be on the task rule one time and you are done. You don't have to come there again. Tell your people that we, I, I don't think it's a good idea. Most people want to do things in the privacy of their houses because your GRE office is stifling, it's intimidating. When they pull, I know in a bad mood, it's not a good place to go. Anyway, I believe that will be the next project. That's a different issue. So you're saying <laughs> exemption four, if the business is registered on your platform, then when I send money to them as a payment, yes, as a payment, as a payment I don't get paid That's don't right. pay That's right. Is there any other exemption? Yes. Yeah. So transfers between uh, uh, principal, agent, and then master agent. Wait. Typically for the... <laughs> okay, so we'll, we'll just break that break down. It down yeah. So typically for the EMIs especially, you mm -hmm. know we have agents who do business on behalf of, uh, uh, say, mobile money, right? If you want to do a cashing, you walk to an agent and then you have cash. You want to exchange it for uh, e-money, electronic money. You have to go to an agent. So that agent has a, a, an agreement with the principal being uh, MTN or Vodafone Cash in this regard. So transfers between the principal being MTN uh, and then the agent and then the master agent, when they move funds between uh, these three entities, uh, there's no uh, e levy applied on Can that. Can you break that down a bit? Let me help you here. So if you look at the business model of the electronic money issuers, mm -hmm. it starts with the company uh, mobile money company that is the big company that provides the mobile money platform now in the past they provide funds to a sub agent mm -hmm. who have a number of agencies below him that he originally you'll be giving like say a um, hundred thousand distribute it among your master agents and your master agents then distribute the same money to the agents who now interface with the customers now this is working capital you do not want to charge the working capital within this ecosystem because mm -hmm. they are float. Um, assuming agent one was giving 5,000, he's done with his sales. Mm -hmm. His 5,000 is exhausted on his wallet. Mm -hmm. But agent three has more funds available. He should mm -hmm. be able to move part of it to the agent that has exhausted his funds. And the levy shouldn't apply to him because this is a working capital. You don't want to disturb that ecosystem. Okay. So the law exempted this Those ecosystem. People. Yes. Quick two questions. Will cash in and cash out attract e-levy. Cash okay. in meaning no. I, want, I have a, 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 a whatever and I want to put money in my account. Yeah. Will okay. it attract e-levy? No, the answer is no. What about what? cash out? Same. No. There's wow. no, there's no. Yeah. This is a question yeah. a lot of people are asking. So cash in and cash out, no e-levy. Cash in and cash out, no e-levy for your own account. Yes. Because it's basically not a transaction. That's right. Yes. So the key word is a transaction. Yes. All right. Uh, this is the point of view. Tonight is an open forum. I've started asking my own questions. When we come back, I'll read some of your questions. Quite a lot of them. My guests, Isaac Kobna Mwako and Nana Opokwe Free Asante, both from GRE. They are part of that powerful committee putting all of this together. If you have a question, send it to us. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. Tonight is an open forum on the E Levy. My guests, uh, they are from the GRA, Isaac Kobna Mwako. He is from the Project Management Unit. And Nana Puku Efri Asante, who is from the Technical Committee. Uh, two big announcements so far. Cash in, cash out doesn't attract E Levy, no matter the amount. So if you are going to cash out your own money, you don't pay E Levy. If you're going to pay into your own account, you don't pay E Levy. If you're also going to transfer from your one of your accounts to another account belongs to you, once all those accounts have the same uh, Ghana card number, you don't pay E-Levy. So make sure you register your Ghana card. Here's a question from Amos Kojo Ansa. With the telcos already charging 1% for sending money, does the passing of the E-Levy bill mean the total charge now becomes 2.50? That is 1% telco charge and 1.5 for the E-Levy. Kojo Amo Ansa. Who's answering that question? Let me answer that. But before I answer that, I think uh, you left one last uh, exemption that okay. uh, Nana didn't say. Nana, I think... Which exemption? Oh, yes. Answer? Electronic clearing of checks. So that's also exempted. Electronic clearing of checks? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fine. So Amos is asking. Okay. So uh, his, his answer or his question is obvious. So mm -hmm. whatever charge the telco is charging you, government doesn't have any problem with that. <laughs> Telcos will go ahead with that charge. Mm -hmm. Additional to that charge is the 1.5 levy. Additional. Let's make yes. it simple. Mm -hmm. Usually, if I want to send 100 CDs to Nana, yes. I have to have um, at least 1% of the 100 CDs on top of the 100. Yes. So that when I send the 101 yeah. or whatever the 1%, when they take that yeah. as the charge, the 100 gets to you. Yeah. So if I want to send you 100 CDs with e levy now, yeah. You say 100 CDs doesn't attract 11. That's yes. right. So let's assume I want to send you 150 CDs. Okay. I'll have to send 150 plus 1.5. 1%. 1% on top of it. Plus another. For the telco to take. To take. Now you're also charging me 1%. 1.5. On the 50. On the 50 CDs. On the 150 that you are. On the 50 CDs. On, on the difference. Yeah. I see. How it would be so let's take it one by one. Okay. I'm sending you 150 CDs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Airtel to go and MTN will charge. Vodafone is free. Yes. So no ahala, I'll yes. send the 150, you get it. Yes. If it's MTN, they will take 1% of the 150. So 1 CD 50 pesos. Yes. So I need 150 plus 1 CD 50 pesos. Mm -hmm. So I need 151.5. Mm -hmm. For the telco. For the telco. They take their 1 CD 50 pesos, you get your 150. Yeah. Now you are charging me 1.5%. Yes. On the 50 CD. But you're not different. charging it on the 150. No. no. So you take 1.5. So 0 0.015. Of mm -hmm. 50. That's of 50. Right. Then you add that to the 151.5. Yes. That's what I have to have in my account. Yes. That's right. Let me see if I can calculate. You, the sender. It's crazy. So, mm -hmm. the viewers, please pardon me. I want to do the calculation on air. This is serious. <laughs> so now, 1.5%. Yes. Of 0 0.015 of 50, 50. CDs. Mm -hmm. That's 0 0.75. Yes. Yeah. So then add I that. add it to 151.5. So I need 152.25 in my account in total. to send you 150 CDs for the account to work. To work Otherwise, right. anything I send has to be lower. Yes. Wow. I don't know if you guys got that, but we'll go through it again. So the question is, the telco charges, they are 1%. Mm -hmm. yes. That one is clear. You charge 1.5, but not on the first 100. That's yes. right. So if I'm sending 500 CDs, yeah. we charge you on charge the 400. on the 400, not That's on the 500. Right. Exactly. Yes. I hope we've gotten that. Yeah. Okay. Let me get another question in. This is um, question five. Could you, Trevor, will an individual be charged for transferring money from one mobile account to another mobile account of the same person? I can answer that. No. <laughs> so now I won't even waste that time. Question six. Will there be any notification whenever the e-levy is applied on any transaction? As in, will there be an indication which will specify the e-levy and other charges? This is from Nemo. Please, okay. do you get the question? Mm -hmm. yeah. Will I know that the e levy has been charged? Yeah. So, so let I me see. pick this one. This is a requirement from the regulator, that's Bank of Ghana, to all the EMIs, that um, you should notify the customer of the charges mm -hmm. before he commits. Okay. So that requirement is still with the telcos. With e levy, they will still do the same. So in notifying the customer, they also have to notify the customer on the portion that is e levy. So that if the customer doesn't feel right about going ahead with the transaction he can, he can um, decline or cancel the transaction so he should know the charges the telco is taking on him 
for telco and then he should know the levy the government is also taking right in front of his screen that's those using the ussd before he puts in his pen and commits that transaction there's another question mm -hmm. usually when i go to somebody maybe i go to a momo agent in tema i want to send nana 150 cds i know that i need to have one uh, i need to add one cd 50 pesos for mtn charge to work but i don't know how to calculate your one your uh, your 1.5 percent on this 50. so the guy will say oh momo he left you by the fr um three cities count how will you prevent such a thing from happening because we just calculated that i need to have 152.25 so i just need 2.25 for my 150 to go to you but i go to the guy in the momo shop and say oh all the charges back on for i can order for three cities count Okay. How will you prevent? It means they'll just be cheating people. No, they won't. Um, because if you look at the industry, what the telcos do, they have the charts. You have a chart there for the them? The telcos themselves have a chart for uh. their charges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you go to most um, agent points, it's, there's a sticker there with the charges. If this amount this is what we pay. Okay. So together with the telcos, we have to create a column that is for e levy. Than mm. each of the telcos. So already we've started doing that. With so you also have your charts? No, we would integrate with that. So you update the, the charts. So yes. there'll be new charts. Yes, w that we would have to agree with the telcos so that on their side, the column is created for e levy and displayed just like okay. they are currently Quick doing. Quick question. Yeah. The telcos announced during the debate about the e levy that to help us, they will reduce their charge from 1% to 0.75. Yes. Have they actually implemented that? Because uh, we haven't gone live, yeah. we wouldn't You don't know. Yeah. So they will do it when we start the e levy. You would see the effect of it when we start implementing it. Yeah. Okay, can I say, please, if you are watching, <laughs> uh, send me a message. Because I know Vodafone doesn't charge, but MTN and Ethertic will charge. So this is your 0.75. When are you going to implement it? And we need to know how to calculate. So for my 150 mm -hmm. example, if I'm sending 150 to him, I just need 0 0.75 of that mm -hmm. on top mm -hmm. plus. Your 1.5 on the 50. Mm -hmm. Confusion now, mm -hmm. Question three. I'm going back. These are questions. Amos Afeji. I have heard the GRA says salaries will not attract e levy. How will the system identify monies as salaries and those not salaries? How and where would one report wrong deductions of e levy for it to be reversed? Do you understand the question? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, I think this is flowing from the earlier interview that I had mm -hmm. on Sunday, mm -hmm. um, where there was some kind of panic that mm -hmm. uh, employee salary will be affected with mm -hmm. the e levy. So mm -hmm. the explanation is this: um, incident of e levy is on the one who is initiating the sending. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at salaries, traditionally we are paid into our bank accounts mm -hmm. from our corporate company's corporate account. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the coverage of the E-Levy Act, it does not include a corporate bank account making a transfer to mm -hmm. another mm -hmm. bank account. Yeah. It's been excluded in the law altogether. So that safely places any company that is having a company bank account that is paying salaries to staff using the banking platform. E-Levy doesn't come in at all. What if the company says that they will pay into my momo? Yes. So then that brings the company into the scoop or the radar of the e-levy. But what is in, uh, what you have to take note is that the incident of this e-levy is on the employer Center. corporate and not on the, the employees who are receiving. Let me get it straight. Okay. If your company pays you normal salary, yes. e-levy is not an issue. Yes. If they pay you into your momo, they will have to bear the cost. Yes. That's what you're saying. Yes. But what if they are paying me through e-switch? Some comp some and I'm asking this for government workers or some people. I don't think I think national service, cocoa farmers, and some people they are paid something through something called e-switch. Okay. Will they be charged e-levy? Okay. So e-switch from we have to consult back the mm -hmm. law. Mm -hmm. Identify the parties that the law needs before the law starts becoming applicable. You have mm -hmm. to identify whether any of the charging parties, bank, EMI, PSP, or specialized deposit taking institution, one of them applies within the transaction. I know um, eSwish is a platform provided mm -hmm. by GIPS. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the charging parties, I don't see GIPS there. 
Can we consider Gibbs as a PSP? No. No. They are a subsidiary of um, Bank of Ghana. Is eSwitch not a payment platform? It is. So eSwitch becomes a payment platform of Gibbs, the service provider? Well, but, uh, or they are not part of your list? No. They are not part of no. it. So if you pay somebody on eSwitch, they will not, it will not attract. Exactly. It's out of career. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm putting Ken Ashikbe on. Uh, thank you, Ken, for joining me. I didn't tell you I was going to call you, but something came up. So we're just trying to calculate if I was sending a Nana 150 CDs, how much I would pay for e-levy. I know that for some of the service providers under your association, it's 1%. So if I'm sending 150 CDs to him, I have to find 1% of mm -hmm. that and add it. Yeah. So 151.5 yeah. is clear. Then they will charge their e-levy on the 50 CDs. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. But I had an yeah. announcement during the debate about e-levy that some of your members had agreed to reduce the charge from 1% to 0.75. So my question is, yeah. is that true? If it is, when will it take effect? So the, we issued a statement sometime last year, you know, after engagement between some of our members and the government. You know, Vodafone, for example, they don't charge. Mm -hmm. It's uh, MTN and SLT go who uh, charge. So they decided to take off a 0.25%. So it means their charge for sending will be 0.25%. And it's only the charge on sending that has been, uh, they agreed to do that uh, their cut off. So they will start when the the payment, when the e-levy uh, takes uh, off? Yes. Fantastic. Have you had any engagements with the GRE and how has it gone? I mean, have your, well, your EMIs had any engagement yes. with GRE? Oh, we've had, we had engagements, you know, right once the minister went to, I mean, the minister went to parliament, we had engagements with the GRE, it was a technical committee form that our members were on. Uh, we so during, before the bill was passed, the, the work we were doing was predicated on the, uh, if the bill was passed. And at that point, we had left that meeting uh, agreeing the fact that we're going to do a phased approach to the whole project. We're going to start with the the, the exemption deal on the wallet basis, so that if, for example, you can had you had uh, two um, maybe SLT go uh, money. Vodafone, Cash, and MTN, then the hundreds were going to apply on each of them so that, uh, you know, the limit, MTN would have been able to determine, Vodafone would have been able to determine whether you cost the limit. Because by then, where the plan was that by March 31st, when certain registration was done, then you are able to use the Ghana card as a unique identifier. But when the bill was passed, that we met uh, the minister, we were made to understand that we were going to the four hawks. So our members have done all the development that needed to see the system to have been able to deliver the first, uh, the, 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 the phased approach. So now what we're doing is we put the meeting with the minister on Wednesday, Thursday, we had a workshop with the GRE where, you know, we went through all the technical issues, we raised some of the issues that we thought needed to be looked at. And the next day, GRE started engaging uh, the technical partners, you know, one-on-one -on -one basis, they shared the APIs with us, our members now are back, you know, doing development to be able to ensure that the integration can be done. Uh, they will do the integration, they will do the testing, uh, you know, uh, all right. so all of that. So that's going on. Fair enough. I'm sure we'll talk again. Ken, it's always a pleasure yeah. talking to you. Engineer nice Dr. Talking. Ken Ashigbe is the chief executive of Chamber of Telcos. Some of the EMIs are members of that chamber. We put them on the phone quickly. Let me go to uh, question one. Can you please find out for me if a check deposit into a third party account will attract e levy? I.e., if I pay a check into another person's bank account, will the withdrawal from my account and the subsequent payment into the person's account require me to be charged 1.5% face value of the check? Okay, so when you uh, deposit check into someone's account, yeah. it doesn't attract the levy. All right. When you, same way, when you go to the bank and then you want to uh, make a withdrawal, okay? So that's just taking e-money and then converting it to cash. All right. It doesn't, the e-levy doesn't apply. So it's as simple as that. All right. Uh, here are some questions Trinibua sent from the Savings and Loans Association. He sent a lot. <laughs> initial, it causes initial critical questions. Number one, who will be responsible for, the whole, for holding the customer data 
for the implementation of the e-levy, GIPS or a private entity. Okay. So this data is solely responsible. The custodian is GRA. GRA. We do not have any uh, third party. We do not have GIPS as the custodian of our data. So it's solely GRA who has custody of Question data. two. Who actually is an entity registered with GRA for income tax purposes? Okay. Is it that any entity that has registered with the GRA, even if it is an NGO, or should it be an income tax payer? Let me pick that. So mm -hmm. I believe he is referring to the merchants. Yeah. So for merchants... We are looking at you being registered for income tax mm -hmm. or um, VAT. So if you pick an NGO, they, they are mostly not liable to be paying um, uh, corporate income tax. That is if they are not um, earning income from the activities. Mm -hmm. But if they engage in maybe they have employees, then they, they are liable to um, register the employees and pay the employee tax. Mm -hmm. If they, provide, um, they are provided service, mm -hmm. um, then they have to withhold um, some uh, monies and pay those to GRE. If that NGO doesn't do anything taxable, then these are the two um, tax handles that they will be liable to and any other one that may occasion. So for us, even um, withholding is like a form of income tax on account or final. Mm -hmm. So they still qualify to be taxpayers, even if these are the tax handle that mm. an NGO is okay. registered for. His third question, will a customer who pays his loan or make a deposit with a regulated financial institution be levied with a tax? So I'll pick that too. So um, in our technical conversation, this is what we um, have looked at, that for the licensed loan taking companies, mm -hmm. like the ones we are going to deal with, that's mm -hmm. the... SDIs. They mm -hmm. are licensed by uh, Bank of Ghana to be providing the loans. Mm -hmm. So uh, they have a, a business model where they also create an individual account for their customers. Mm -hmm. So our understanding is that those accounts are credited with the loan and when you're moving um, from one account of the loan company to any of the uh, uh, mobile money or bank accounts that they will debit you with, it becomes an account-to-account -account transfer, and for that ma matter, it should enjoy mm. the exemption. That is um, how we are looking at but I think there's more work to be done on that. As a similar yeah. question, it says, yeah. will a financial institution which disburses loan or refund a deposit to customers be made to pay the tax? So I, I believe similar it, comes, question. It, it comes the same way. It's mm -hmm. a bit, we, we are engaging the SDIs. If they, they are the last group we are yet to engage but the model that we are looking at is that since they've also created account of their customers on their platform and it is a funds from a customer account to another account the customer who's if the identity is the same mm. then it shouldn't attract that is All right. our there's a question from Elvis Selassie at Domina you know telcos charge one percent for a certain amount and then when it gets to a certain threshold they just they have it, it. They, cap it. Yeah. they cap it yeah. his question is will is there a cap on e-levy charges, Elvis Selassie at Domina? Is there a cap? Okay, so there isn't any cap on e-levy. So if you transfer a thousand, uh, the e-levy will apply on the nine hundred. If you transfer ten thousand, yes, the so more you send, the one point five. It's exactly. not like the way the telcos do it. Exactly. That's there's, there's, no cap, there's no cap. There's on no cap. There's no cap. Yeah. Robert Akumensa says, Mr. Avale, how about those of us in Europe? If we send money to our relatives via, say, tap tap, how will it work? Will we be charged e-levy? Okay. So, when in doubt, consult the law and break it down into the individual components. Mm -hmm. So, the law defines uh, electronic transfer as a transfer of um, money originating from some originator through a medium, an institution, or mm -hmm. a platform to a beneficiary. Mm -hmm. Now, um, for simplicity, GRE need to find who the charging parties are. So for foreign remittance, the originator is mostly not to be found. He is not within our jurisdiction. Yeah. And um, the charging party is not the one who is sending. He is the intermediary. Meanwhile, the, the, the law says that charge the originator, mm -hmm. the sender. Now here is the case the sender yes, is nowhere, to be, nowhere to be found. So how, how are you going to charge the sender? So this is one of the technical ones that we think... It, so it any money originating from abroad, even if it's coming directly to your momo, 
So long as it's from abroad, you will know it's not from here. Yeah. You would know. You would know yeah. by that business model. They would know that this is a foreign remittance. Yeah. It has the transaction ID and all those codes following Being it. Being initiated from so mm. it 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 the law didn't directly mention it, but going by the business model, we mm. believe that is out of scope. Before we took a break, John sends a question. Hi, Bernard. GRA said transactions in a day not exceeding 100 cities. What is their definition of a day? <laughs> okay, so midnight to midnight. So, for example, if you send your first 100 today, okay, let's just use 200 mm. at 4 p.m. Mm. Okay, so it doesn't work at uh, 4 p.m., 24 hours after so that. So it's midnight to midnight. It's yes. midnight to midnight. So today is... Uh, whatever it's what's the time 9 48 yeah so we are still in wednesday yes. yeah so if it's midnight yes get reset then you, you can transfer at 11 58 pm is the day before yes, yes. It's and the then you before. wait till 12 02 exactly it's yeah. the next day it's the, the next, next day, day. Yeah. yeah all right this is still the point of view we are trying to put in as many questions as possible my guests are from the gra isaac Amoako and Nana Ifria Santi. We have a few more minutes to ask some of your questions. Stay with us. Welcome back. Point of view tonight has guests from the GRA Isaac Kobena Amoako from the Project uh, uh, Management Unit and Nana Pukwe Ifria Santi from the Ile Technical Committee. Thank you for your questions. A few more. Sampuku sends a question. Good evening. Does GRE pay for the service rendered by the levy collecting companies? Okay, so when you look at the law, uh, let me just quote what it says here, that the levy shall be charged on the electronic transfer at the time of transfer by the entities listed in the uh, schedule. Mm. And then when you look at the schedule, you have the EMIs, you have the banks, you have the PSPs, and then the SDIs. So they are mandated by law to actually do the charging. So they are basically discharging their duties. So All right. GRA pays. Question from Ecomosis. Does GRA have a system robust enough to sit on the telcos system to ensure the revenue is collected? That's question one. Question two. Will they need another Kelney GVG for revenue assurance? Still from the same echo. Okay, so I'll take the first one. Yes, we do have a robust system, but then it's not sitting at the uh, the hub of the telcos or the EMIs. Okay. Where is it sitting? Yeah, it's in the cloud. What the is that safe? It's actually the best form of uh, administering. Uh, should be in the cloud, not in, in some server. Yeah, you can have a duplicate e of e that. Even the bigger <laughs> companies get. Their system goes down sometimes, so yeah. safe and this and it's the protocol. So you have to just follow the security. And then protocols. for scaling, so for example, if when you during Christmas, you know, a lot of people do a lot of transactions, right? So then you have quite a lot of load and stress on the system. So your ability to scale your servers in the cloud easily is is, uh, is something that can be done. But then when you have a local data center, a physical data center, and then you want to scale, it means you have to now get additional servers. And that's just going to defeat the whole. Do you purpose. need a Kelney GVG type revenue assurance? Well, I'll say that um, for for us in GRA, we we making sure that once we get these transactions from the charging parties, um, we also have to go back and check with the data that they have whether they haven't shortchanged um, the authority. So as an authority. We have the power to do audits when um, the need be. So I, I believe when um, the Commissioner General feels that we need to do an audit. But do you remember what the law said about that, that you cannot get a private entity to do revenue assurance? I think the law says something like that. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. So for us, we told you in the morning, um, we are going by the very letter of the law. So, so you are distinguishing an audit from revenue assurance? Well, because the, the law is explicit that you cannot... Yes, yes. Contract yes. a third party to do revenue assurance. Yes. So I, I believe the answer the Commissioner General gave is stunned that he's going by the law. The law. But the law doesn't say finance ministry cannot do that. Yes, it does. It says say. you cannot do that. Yes. Yeah. So. I see. We have to investigate this further. <laughs> um, okay. A few more questions. Um, does e levy apply to cryptocurrency and blockchain? So let, let me pick that up. So 
crypto currency, at least we will say that it is not a legal tender that the Bank of Ghana yeah, has um, regulates. Uh, regulates right now. I believe in future they will, but currently they haven't. So one, I will say no, because it isn't one of the regulated means of um, exchange mm -hmm. by the BOG. Yeah. Mm. That, that would be my, my, my first reaction. Now, crypto sits on a technology known as blockchain. So the blockchain is just a technology that um, administers a, a crypto. Mm. So crypto is an electronic money or right. an e-cash. And we need our regulator to agree that that is one of our legal attenders. Before you can move there. Before I think I saw some e-cash yes, document which, from the Bank of yes, Ghana. They are week. coming to do e-cash for the country. Bank of Ghana. They don't have e-cash yet. Um, I believe they are in the, the project. Process. But the they process, are collecting yeah. e-levy, yet they don't have <laughs> cash. Uh, kindly ask your guest from GRA, does the e-levy apply to using a visa card for transactions? Of course it does. How? So that will bring it into the realm of specified merchant, merchant payments. payments. So who issued uh, you the um, visa card? It will be one of the entities charging parties listed. Now, what is your intention of using the debit credit card to make payments? So mm. it brings you into the scope. If I use Visa to pay for Netflix, yes, you, you, you are within the scope. I see. Because you are making a payment and you will come under specified merchant payment. So then we will we'll go and but identify... If I'm, I'm paying a bill with my Visa to a, an entity that's registered. The levy doesn't apply. No, hold on. You already explained the star 1701. So let's assume I'm paying DSTV. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I want to use my Visa card to pay for DSTV. Yes. DSTV is obviously registered yes. as a tax-paying entity. Yes. So my DSTV should not attract e-levy. It That's wouldn't. Right. It wouldn't. So, so then it will not. It will not, yeah. It would enjoy the exemption known as specified merchant, merchant payment. payment. What if I'm paying for my DSTV through Express Pay? Same. Same Express thing. Pay is a PSP. So, so because it's DSTV, registered as a tax-paying entity, I will not pay. No. But what if it's Netflix which is, or Amazon? You pay. Because Amazon is not it's known not to known you. not known to exactly. GRA. Exactly. I see. Viewers, I hope that's clear. So your visa card as a transaction, it depends on which entity you are paying to. Based on exemption three. So if the entity is a registered tax paying entity with GRA and it's a bill that you're paying. Paying. And your visa was issued by one of the listed entities. Because your card could have been given to you by a bank in China. Fair enough. But that one doesn't attract. No. But if my bank is a Ghanaian bank, Ghanaian bank. That's one of and I'm ways. making a payment to say multi-choice for DSTV, once DSTV is registered as a tax-paying entity, they are an exempted merchant. Yes. Yes. Exempted merchant. But Amazon is not. It's not. That's right. Okay. What about buying a school application form online? University of Development Studies. I want to go and do a master's. And they sell their form online. Same. Yeah, it's the same principle. So you have to check uh, the university. Uh, is it a commercial establishment registered with the GRA for either income tax or VAT? So once it fulfills those conditions... So if I'm paying uh, school fees online, yeah. if, the school, if the school is registered as a tax-paying entity, yes. it's exempt because and the school fee is a bill. Good. And the means that you're paying has qualifies as a payment service. Yes. And one of the charging parties is the source of your funds. So I think the lesson is that don't go to any school that doesn't pay tax. <laughs> I think don't do anything with anybody who doesn't pay tax. Because yes, that that's the pay. lesson, yeah. And also, it's essentially, do stuff with Ghanaian companies because Ghanaian companies are known and registered. So this is quite interesting. There are so many questions I couldn't ask. You have to promise me you'll come back after Easter. <laughs> after Easter, okay. You'll come back after Easter. Okay. So they will come back after Easter to, to answer more of your questions. Apologies for not putting all your questions through. Thank you for watching. Uh, tonight's edition, I've been speaking to Isaac Kobina Mwaku from the GRA and Nana Poku Efriya Sante. The business dashboard is next. Stay with us. Bye-bye.